Okay, so this is a characteristic of functions you may be asked about on the final exam. It's classifying it as even or odd. Now, it doesn't rely solely upon the exponents, okay? Um, so let's just talk a little bit of what it, about what it means to be an even function. Graphically, they're symmetric about the y-axis. So that means that they're mirror images through the y-axis. The y-axis goes straight through the middle of the graph. If you draw a line along the y-axis, the left side is going to reflect onto the right side. Uh, algebraically, what it means is that opposite x values have the same y values. So for example, let's talk about the function y equals x squared when x equals negative 3 and positive 3, both of those, their y value is 9. x squared is what we consider an even function, and so that's how it's reflected. Uh, when you look symbolically at the equation, if you plug in negative x into the function and you simplify it, you will end up getting the original function and we'll look at that here in a minute. It's a little, I have to show you how it works, okay? It's, it's kind of difficult to explain in words, but we'll see how that works here in a second. Odd functions are symmetric about the origin. Now it's a little bit more difficult to describe that symmetry. It's more of a rotational thing. If you rotate your calculator uh, so that you flip it upside down, it's still going to look like the same function if it's an odd uh, function. So we'll look at that here in a second too. Um, but in this case, for odd functions, opposite x values have opposite y values. The o's go together, odd, opposite. So an example of an odd function is uh, y equals x cubed. Okay, so when x is negative 2, the y value is negative 8. And when x is positive 2, the y value is positive 8, the same number, just opposite signs. Okay, it's the same number, they just have opposite signs. Symbolically for this one, when you plug in negative x, you will get the exact opposite of the original function. So all the signs will change of the original function. Now, obviously most of these exercises, the whole purpose is to determine whether they're even or odd. So most of them will be even or odd, but the reality is many functions that you just see on a regular basis in this class are neither even nor odd, okay? They're really close to one or the other, but they're not exactly. So when we plug in negative x, it might sort of look like the original function, but it's not exactly the same and it's not exactly opposite either, okay? So let's look at some examples. Determine whether a function is even, odd, or neither. <clears throat> let's approach it from this perspective. Let's look, uh, let's type this into our y equals, okay? Let's type this function, negative 3x squared plus 4, into our calculators. We're going to look at it three different ways. Okay, first of all, let's look at the graph. Okay, it's a parabola. We know the parabolas are symmetric. The question is, is it symmetric on the y-axis? Does the y-axis go straight through the middle of this function? When you look at the graph, the answer to that is yes. Okay, so just looking at the graph, hopefully you can say that's an even function because the left side is a mirror image of the right side. If we look at the table, if you center up your table so that you see negative 3 at the top and positive 3 at the bottom, look at the y-values. Those opposite x values have the same y values. There's another justification to this function being even. Let's look at, look at it symbolically. Let's plug negative x into our function. Okay, f of negative x is negative 3. Put the negative x in parentheses and plus 4. Now, we need to simplify this. If you square a negative number, aren't you supposed to get the same result as if you'd squared the same positive number? 
you are, okay? So negative x squared is really just the same as positive x squared, okay? Negative x squared is the same as positive x squared, or you can look at it this way. That negative is like a negative 1 right there, so you square the negative 1 and you square the x, well, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So this is exactly the same as the original function, so this is an even function. Okay, I just proved it three ways. Symmetry, table, algebraic. And I point those three ways out because I don't know how they're going to ask you the question. Okay, I really don't, I don't think that if they ask you this question, they're just going to ask you is it even or odd. They're going to like have some kind of reason after it, so you have to be able to identify the correct reason. Okay, let's look at 2x cubed minus 4x. We're going to look at all three ways again. 2x cubed minus 4x. Let's look at the graph first. Okay, first of all, it goes through the origin. That's number one. To have symmetry about the origin, it has to go through the origin. Okay, um, the second thing, and to me, I'm not this visual. I can't really visualize this. If you were to take your calculator and flip it upside down, it would look like the exact same graph. So my suggestion to you is with the person beside you, one of you keep it normal, and then one of you turn it so that the numbers are on the top. Hold them side by side. They should look like the exact same graph. Okay? They should look like the exact same graph. Um, that's the rotational symmetry about the origin. Okay, so I'll give you a second to actually see that. Okay, so you've seen the graph. Let's look at the table. Opposite x values, they have the same y values, but they have opposite signs. Negative 3 is negative 42. Positive 3 is positive 42. Now let me point out something. The negative x values don't always have to have negative y values. Look at negative 1. Negative 1 is positive 2. Positive 1 is negative 2. I don't want you to get that misconception there. Um, but opposite x values have opposite y values. So let's see how to do this algebraically. Okay, we're going to plug in negative x. Okay, now this time negative x cubed, that negative 1 there in front, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then negative 4x times negative x is positive 4x. Notice the function kind of stays the same, but our signs are the exact opposite. So that's the third justification that this is an odd function. Same function, all the signs are opposite. It was positive 2, now it's negative 2. It was negative 4, now it's positive 4. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's look at C. Okay, let's look at C. Um, A was an even function and it had even exponent. B was an odd function and it had odd exponent. C has a mixture of the two. So let's see whether this is even or odd. 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, if we look at the graph, well, it's definitely not even because it's not a mirror image, and it's not odd either because if we rotate this around, it's going to look close to it, but it's not exactly the same. The other thing, it doesn't go through the origin, okay? It does not pass through the origin. So this one is neither. Uh, let's look at the table. See how the y values don't even match up at all, okay? They don't even match up at all. Um, now, we probably could find some symmetry. Nope, it's not even symmetric that way either. Um, okay, now let's look at what happens. Obviously, we've confirmed it twice that it's neither, but let's also look at uh, plugging in negative x, okay, because I want you to understand this concept as well. Okay. Negative x cubed, we just talked about that. That gives us negative 2x cubed. Squaring negative x gives us positive x squared. Negative 4 times negative x is positive 4x, and we didn't do anything to that plus 4 on the end. So 
all of our numbers stay the same. And the first sign is opposite, but the second sign isn't. The second sign stays the same. The third sign is opposite, but then the last sign stays the same. Okay, so it's not, um, it's not exactly the same function, and it's not exactly the opposite function either. Half of it is, but half of it's not. So this is neither. Okay. Yes, I realize that you guys always have a calculator at your disposal, and you will on the final exam. That's why I'm showing you all. The, I'm showing you the graph. I'm showing you the table. That I'm showing you this because in future math classes, you will need to know how to show this as well. I promise you. Whether you take pre calc or to college, whether you take pre calc with me or AP calc, you're going to have to know how to do this without a calculator. Okay, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. All right, uh, let's look at the next one. What type of function is this in D? Rational. Yay, we're finally learning that. All right, what do y'all think? Just looking at it, what do you think it's going to be? Even, odd, or neither? Okay, I hear a couple of for even. I hear an odd. Any neithers? Let's look at the graph. And the winner is... Even, look at the table just to be sure, it is symmetric, opposite, x values have the same y values, um, and then we could also plug in negative x to confirm it a third way, and squaring the negative x is the same as squaring positive x, so it is the exact same original function, so this is an even function. Okay, let's look at the absolute value. Let's take the opportunity to remind ourselves where the absolute value button is because you cannot just put x in parentheses. It does not do the same thing. Okay, so 3 for the coefficient in front. Absolute value is under math, which is right under your alpha button. If you go over to num, and it's the very first option there. ABS stands for absolute value. Put in the X. Close your parentheses because X is the only thing inside the absolute value. Plus 5. And then let's look at the graph. It looks even because it looks symmetric. And look at the table. Opposite X have the same Y values. Um, let's think about this. If we plugged in negative x, what is the absolute value due to a number? It's the, di it's the distance from zero. Okay, so negative numbers the absolute value of a negative number is just a positive number because you're just talking about the distance from zero. So the absolute value of negative x is the same thing as the absolute value of positive x. Okay. If you want to, you can kind of look at it like this, and this will come in handy for later. You can break that up into the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of x, Okay, and then the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So it's just 3 times the absolute value of x. Okay. If you're curious, technically, mathematically, that's what's happening right there. So absolute value doesn't look like it, but it's an even function. It is an even function. doesn't look like the equation doesn't look like it is what I meant. Okay. Um, and then the last one, sine of x, trig. We haven't done any of that in this class. It is coming soon. Um, but... Let's look at its graph. So, what do y'all think? It's definitely not even, right? It's not a mirror image across the y-axis. Do you think it's odd? It does go through the origin. Okay, let's look at the table. We can solve the debate really easily. Look at the table. Opposite x values have opposite y values. Sine of x is an odd function. Now, I'm not going to get into the, well, I'll, I'll show you. There's a rule.